after a long stop, as the aircraft has not been electrically supplied for at least six hours, one of the first item to check is the status of the batteries. To check the batteries, check they are off or switch them off and check the voltages as they are always displayed. Note, as long as the DC BAT bus is not powered, off lights on the BAT1 and BAT2 push button switches are not lighted on, even in the off position. As you can see, both batteries are below the minimum required 25.5 volt. So, you will have to recharge the batteries from external power. The green avail light is not lighted, meaning that you have no ground power. You have to ask the ground personnel to connect a ground cart. The ground cart is now connected. The green avail light has appeared, which means external power is plugged in, its voltage and frequency are normal. It is ready for use. Then the battery 1 must be switched on. Note, the battery 2 off light comes on as the DC bath bus is supplied. Then the battery 2 must be switched on. Note, the engine generator fault lights come on as they are supplied by the static inverter which operates when both battery push button switches are on, speed below 50 knots. As the battery voltage was below 25.5, a charging cycle of 20 minutes is required. For that, the external power push button must be momentarily pressed. So, the avail light is replaced by the blue on light indicating the external power contactor is closed. The ECAMELIC page has been called for you. You may confirm that the external power supplies the AC buses via the bus tie contactor, BTC logic. Also you have to check that the battery contactors are closed and the batteries are charging. Note: Battery charging is indicated by an arrow from DC BAT bus to the related battery. Now, 20 minutes are elapsed, and you should check that the battery voltage is above 25.5. For that, the battery 1 and 2 must be set to off, and the related voltage must be checked on the ELEC panel. On the ECAM ELEC page, Notice the DC BAT bus indication due to both battery charge limiters not operating, with the DC BAT bus still supplied by the DC-1. But, before powering electrically the aircraft, if it has been electrically supplied, during the past 6 hours, the related battery voltage will be above 25.5, ensuring a battery charge above 50% so the batteries must be switched on. Now, if the APU has to be started on battery only, make sure to start it within 30 minutes following the battery selection to on, because the charge of the batteries will be less than 25% if they still supply the aircrafts after 35 minutes. As the avail light is on, the external power push button can be momentarily pressed to supply the AC buses, as shown on the ECAMELIC page. As the batteries are fully charged, the related battery charge limiter, BCL, has disconnected its battery as shown. It is time to start the APU. We will start the APU for you. When the APU master switch push button is set to on, the APU generator parameters are displayed and the BCL connects its battery to the DC BAT bus in order to assist the TR1 during the start of the APU as shown after pressing on the start push button. 
Then, when the APU avail light is on, the APU generator is energized. Now, it is time to switch off the external power. We will do it for you. When the external power push button is momentarily pressed, with the on light on, it is replaced by the green avail light, so, the external power contactor is open. This allows now, the APU generator line contactor, to close, shown by the related green line and by the generator load. Let's look for a moment, at the outside of the aircraft, to see the only item, related to the electrical system during the walk around. You should check that the external power access door is closed, if not in use. Before starting the engines, we have to check the charge of the batteries by initiating a charging cycle. For that, the ECAM ELEC page must be called and both battery push button switches must be set to off, then to on. We will do it for you. As soon as the related battery push button switch is set back to on, the related BCL connects the battery. A battery is correctly loaded when its current drops below 60 amperes after 10 seconds and continues to decrease. If not, you must wait until the charging cycle is completed and perform this check again. Note, the charging cycle is completed when the BCL has disconnected the battery. It is now time to remove external power and to start the engines. Usually when we start the engines, the ECAM engine page is displayed. However, for training purposes only, we will keep the ECAM ELEC page displayed throughout the flight. We will start engine 2 first. The generator 2 fault light goes off when the generator 2 line contactor is closed. This confirmed the related generator parameters are within limits. And so, the BTC logic has automatically allowed the transfer of the AC bus 2 from APU generator to the generator 2. Then, the engine 1 is started. The generator 1 fault light goes off when the generator 1 line contactor is closed. This confirms the related generator parameters are within limits. And so, the BTC logic has automatically allowed the transfer of the AC bus 1 from APU generator to the generator 1. As long as the APU generator parameters are within limits, the APU generator line contactor is kept closed. Now, as the APU is not required for takeoff, it may be shut down. Depending on the APU version, refer to your documentation. With the APU master switch push button in off selection, the APU may enter into a cooling period. So, the APU generator will stay online as long as the avail light is on. Note, when the APU is not running, the APU generator fault light is inhibited. In flight, on the ECAM ELEC page, you have to periodically monitor the electrical parameters and the loads. After landing, the APU has to be started. When the APU is running, the APU generator line contactor closes, provided the APU generator parameters are within limits. Then, both engines are shut down. As soon as the engine generator line contactor opens, the BTC logic allows the APU generator to maintain the supply of the related AC bus. Then, the ground card is plugged in. If its electrical parameters are within limits, 
They are displayed on the eCam ELEC page, and on the ELEC panel a green avail light is on. Now, the external power can be connected to the electrical network. For that, the external power push button must be momentarily pressed. We will do it for you. When it is momentarily pressed, the avail light is replaced by the blue on light, which indicates the external power line contactor is closed. This is confirmed on the eCam ELEC page by the green line. Note, when the external power line contactor is closed, the APU generator line contactor is automatically open. Also, the external power line contactor is kept closed, as long as the external power parameters are within limits. If APU is not required, it can be shut down as shown. Then, before leaving the aircraft, the external power can be switched off as shown. Note, when only batteries are connected to the electrical network, the ECAM display units are no longer available. Then, before setting both battery push button switches to off, make sure that the APU has been shut down at least two minutes before, in order to have DC power available to completely close the APU air intake flap. When the batteries are switched off, no more power is available. So, on the ELEC panel, only the battery voltage indications are still on, as they are LCDs, and directly supplied by the related battery hot bus. Also, the external power avail light will be on, as long as the ground card is plugged in, and its electrical parameters are within limits.